watching Channel 20 TV. Be with Channel 20 and let us make things better together. Uh, we have got with us today Joanne Nelubega. She is the youth icon. She is the pride of Uganda. She is the pride of Africa. And why she is the pride you are going to explore from this today's talk show. So let us welcome the youth icon, our pride, Joan Nelubega. Hello, Joan. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm going to start with some COVID general question, and then we will go through your work and your effort that you have been doing in Africa. So first of all, how's the COVID situation in general in Uganda? If you'd like to just share a little bit with our audience, please. Uh, right now in Uganda, we like the COVID situation for example our cases are growing a bit higher than before uh i think because in the beginning we we're all locked down now we're released so now we meet a lot of people in public places but still the cases are not so high within the central where most people are um but yeah it is not so it's not very bad but it's also not very good but right mm -hmm. now uh people are most of the people are able to work but still like public places like churches schools are mm -hmm. still closed down mm -hmm. yeah but mm -hmm. others other businesses are open and operating right now mm -hmm. so it's uh, getting a little bit better not not that worst situation that's good to hear from you uh, I'm going to ask you, regardless about COVID-19, how's the overall development progress in Uganda? I'm talking about economic perspective eventually. What do you think, how's the growth, how's the improvement from your perspective you can observe that you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, to be honest, I personally was like, have been frustrated. Uh, in the past couple of years with the economy, with growth, with the infrastructure. Uh, but right now, uh, for 2020, I think a lot of, a lot of things mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of systems, uh, the infrastructure has grown a bit, that some things are simpler to use, like, uh, well, because Uganda being a landlocked country, mm -hmm. uh, it affects our infrastructure so much. But lately, it, things are becoming easier. Like last year, I will tell you that uh, we didn't have any accessible payment, online payment method that was easy to access from people outside Uganda and East Africa. Mm -hmm. But now, I, these things are coming up. And so growth is happening. At least mm -hmm. economic growth is happening this year. And I think if it wasn't for COVID-19, would be very very far from where we were but in the last couple of years it was very very frustrating everything you would want mm -hmm. to do to grow let's say a company or a business or to really uh, live normally you would you would find out that it's not accessible in the country it's not mm -hmm. able to be used in the country so mm -hmm. yeah now, now I would like to focus on your project and your work. So when did you start realizing that you need to or you'd like to do something relating to malaria? When did you start feeling that for the first time? Uh, when you ask me the first time, uh, the first time I didn't do anything about it. So the first time that I really wanted to do something about malaria, I was very late. I think I was like eight years old. <laughs> but then I, I that time I only cared about myself. I wanted mm. to uh, help myself not suffer from malaria as often as I used to. But then I, again, when I thought about it and I actually decided that I am doing something about it, it was in 2015. Uh, for example, I personally, I suffered a lot from malaria when I was little, 
Mm. Uh, so most of the days I never used to go to school. I used to stay at the orphanage with our caretakers. I grew up from an orphanage. Mm. And then I was discriminated from a lot of activities, sometimes from even playing. Mm. Uh, so like that made my childhood a bit uh, painful and a bit sad. But of course, it wasn't entirely sad. So but then uh, in 2015, like I have a friend who lost her five-year-old child, daughter, from mal- to malaria. And that kind of brought back my pain from my childhood because the, ch- the kid was my friend. So because of all of that, I just decided that this is the right time. It came in... I wouldn't say in the right time because it's a time I was really uh, trying to find out what I am going to concentrate on in my life. So that time I decided to do something to find something to so that other kids like her do not go through the same experience or parents do not go through the pain of death for their kids because of malaria because at that point i knew that malaria can be prevented Mm. but then i thought the people that are really affected do not even know that do not even have access to the um prevention measures that are available that are everywhere so i was like at least i'll try to make these preventive measures that are already available accessible to them Mm. So I just wanted to create or find interventions against malaria for the people that are mostly affected by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is why soap? Why did you come up with the idea that you're going to prepare or you're going to produce or you're going to manufacture a soap which is going to prevent others from affecting through malaria? Why soap? Why not any other options like spray, tablet, capsule, whatever? Why particularly soap? Why why it was in your interest? Uh, <laughs> actually, that wasn't my interest. The soap wasn't in my, my, my interest. But um, so I was developing this product, uh, not for me, but for the people. So. I we carried out different interviews and surveys from local families uh, in hospitals, trying to really find out that product that almost every family uses. Oh. And because we are targeting low-income communities, mm. we had to find a product, a common product. And you will find that almost every family, however poor they are, they buy a bar of soap. Mm. On as their basic needs, they will not buy. Some of them will not buy sugar or salt or mm. perfumes or what, but they buy soap because they have to shower, they have to clean themselves. So mm. that was the most common product, and mm. it's the most common product that even the poor family that does not maybe buy soap on their daily basis, they mm. buy it at least for their child, for a newborn baby, until they become like five. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why it's so. No, 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 it's rightly you say that I'm really overwhelmed and amazed the way you applied some economics and marketing principles while targeting uh, that how you can support the best possible way to your community, to your society people, to your country people. It's really commendable. Hats off to you. Now, I'd like to ask you in 2015, whenever you started this journey i'm sure uh, any journey doesn't get the uh, you know the full of uh, roses bait it's always a little bit hiccup always a little bit some cataracts on the way towards future so that time were you able to get some support from your family from your society from your friends or even from your government did you get any support I'm talking about 2015. Uh, 2015, I was supposed to go to school. <laughs> and 
I went to school in September as I think I was supposed to go to university then. And when I was there, like one month went, two months, it wasn't very easy for me for mm. different other factors, but also I was like, my heart wasn't really there because I had already started building something and like I already knew what, like where I wanted to be. Mm. Though I didn't, I didn't, and I still don't have a clear picture of how I will reach there. I felt like, um, like I wasn't there, and with the other challenges that I had, I thought maybe this is not the right time for me to be at school. Mm. It wasn't the right time for me to be at school, so I first talked to my father <laughs> about it, and he wasn't open to it so he wanted me to stay at school I talked to a couple of my friends and like you know as much as it was hard like everyone was advising me to hustle and manage to finish school then uh, so I just woke up one day and packed my things and left university and I went to uh, an incubation program. It's called uh, Social Innovation Academy. It's a place that empowers marginalized youths to become social entrepreneurs. So I went back there and started working on Uganics. So I spent almost like a year and two years without speaking to my friends. Oh, like for example, my father was very mad at me. I spent like almost a year without talking to him. Mm. Um, yeah, I understand his place because uh, education is power, you know. So mm-hmm. I understand where he stands that he like this is success mm-hmm. to a lot of us, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but yeah. yeah so when that happened in twenty fifteen. So yeah, when all that happened, I just decided to extract the people that bring me negative energy and confuse me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, this is rightly said. And, you know, whenever something exceptional going to happen, whenever something exclusive going to happen, normally we do not understand, we do not see its prospect. Uh, but it needs devotion, sacrifice, and passion the way you have done it. And you took the risk, of course, because of that risk. Now you can proudly say a lot of people are getting benefit out of your product. Now I'm going to ask you about Uganics, about this organization. Can you please share with our audience the size of the operation, what you do, what's your role, how many people, what's the current activities, a little bit introduction about this Uganics. Okay, so yeah, uh, what we do at Uganics is we, uh, of course, we are, have a vision to create a malaria free world and we are leveraging on everyday products like a soap to fight malaria. Uh, so we incorporate uh, natural components that repels mosquitoes into these everyday products. And our aim is to make these products accessible to the mostly affected communities. And those are mostly low income communities in rural communities. So what we use as social business model, for example, we are working with host, we are working with hotels and resorts. We are working with tour companies. We are working with international distributors, pharmacies, and to get the product to the travelers. And to the high end market, this is the high and middle income earners within Uganda and other countries we are working in. So they buy our products at a high profit margin. For example, the hotels buy it at a profit margin of 50%, mm. and the travelers buy it at a profit margin of 85%. Mm. And then we are able to cross finance for the low income communities and sell to them our product at the same price as regular soap, that is at 75 cents. Mm. Oh, I yeah. See. So right now, uh, with you. So right now we are thirty-seven uh, with thirty women 
and seven youths. So we also empower women to grow the herbs that we use in the product and extract essential oils from them. So we set up extraction centers mm -hmm. and then they supply us with the basic, very basic raw materials. So this is to employ the women, but also to have a reliable supply chain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're only currently covering Uganda, or do you have any plan to cover other African nations or out of Africa? What's your future target? So our goal for this year was to expand to uh, greater East Africa, like Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, but uh, it's not going to be possible but we're already in kenya we already started going into kenya and then uh this year early this year we got a, a certification in all the european union countries so we have like a partner in austria oh, okay Good. who is supplying to the like european union countries mm -hmm. yeah so we wanted so if we didn't have we are lucky we had this because because of COVID-19, the tourism mm -hmm. sector went down. But because we have this distributor or partner there, mm -hmm. we are able to continue selling to uh, like to that specific industry. Mm -mm -mm. Sounds very, very good. So I'm going to ask you, in current the present uh, circumstances, do you get any support from the social group or even it can be NGOs or even it can be from private sector do you get any patronization any donation any financial support any encouragement from any group of people yes uh we've gotten support from a couple of organizations mm -hmm. so we've gotten support from the social innovation academy we've gotten support from the tony lumelu foundation of five thousand dollars that was in 2017 in 2018, we got support of $12,500 from the Anzisha Prize. Mm. And Johnson. Um, so through this COVID-19 crisis, we usually have uh, uh, maybe their patrons, I don't know, but we get people that are willing to support a specific community, like maybe orphanages, or in a refugee camp that reach out to us and they donate soap to that specific community through us and mm -hmm. then we are able to supply it there mm -hmm. even this year we got uh like a relief fund to supply our products to the communities from the Anzisha price mm -hmm. and currently what you are busy with are you busy with any particular production or particular mission or particular activities or project what's your current engagement uh today we had a production of the essential oils so and but right now we are the most uh pressing uh project we are working on is uh we are building a bigger uh, facility for our production because we want to increase our production capacity and mm -hmm. we've gotten some support from johnson and johnson up for that so that's like the big project we are working on uh, setting up the facility but yeah we also of course do production of the products and now it's the beginning of them we are going into a new month so a lot of customers are expecting their orders mm -hmm. in the next weeks yeah mm -hmm. a few minutes back you were talking about women empowerment out of 37 staff of yours you have only 30 of them uh women that's fantastic so uh, same time, I would like to ask you, what's the current stand of Uganda? Do you think Uganda is also favoring women? Do you think Uganda is supporting women entrepreneurship, uh, women empowerment? What do you think in 2020s Uganda? Okay, <laughs> the good thing is what I think. So uh, I don't know, but uh, in my kind of network, oh, I have a lot of colleagues and partners that are really doing uh, women empowerment. Mm -hmm. I even have uh, 
friends that are fighting for women rights uh in economic growth and in the business world mm -hmm. so i think um uh, yeah as a lot of people say entrepreneurship is key mm -hmm. to the growth of africa or to the survival of africa so these are all entrepreneurs and you find uh, groups of entrepreneurs that have over 100 women so i think right now it is happening i don't know if it's done by the government i don't know if the government is doing something about it but we have we, we have women leaders in the government so mm. i don't know but i don't know if the government is itself is doing something about it i don't know of anything mm -hmm. but at least i know that the people of uganda the citizens of uganda are doing something about it yes <laughs> and now suppose if uh government of Uganda would like to listen from you or African nations would like to take your one suggestion then what the suggestion you'd like to give it to them what will be your request to your government or to all African nations government what will be your key suggestion Um, my suggestion would be like I've heard of uh, government um, government initiatives supporting wanting to support youth entrepreneurs and everything. I've just never seen an entrepreneur that they have supported, like for example, the government of Uganda. And I know of a lot of young and old entrepreneurs that are really doing great work not just Ugandans, but a lot of other organizations and companies doing very very great work but then some companies fail because of uh, a lot of factors that are still caused by the government the infrastructure mm -hmm. the taxes the, a lot of them so i feel maybe uh, i would ask for transparency Mm -hmm. uh for the government to really support the very young enterprises because they are here for example i am i have a purpose to fight malaria but mm -hmm. if the government is to support me that effect and the impact would be much bigger than i can do right now a lot of uh like other organizations from other countries are supporting me mm -hmm. so government need to support like the local young enterprises the mm -hmm. local young entrepreneurs that are trying to do something that is going to improve the economy mm -hmm. and then other let's say the african union as we are talking about same thing uh instead of maybe going of course it's okay to go through the government and support the economy of a country like uganda through the government yes and then maybe they can also give an opportunity to support directly entrepreneurs or youths directly instead of always going through the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, John, we are almost in the end of our show. Uh, before ending about our show, we'd like to ask you last two questions. One is, how was your experience of today's show in this channel 20 how did you feel um at first i was a bit i didn't know what to expect uh but i like talking about Ugandans. so i am like i feel like i am talking to someone i'm talking to people that are in front of me it doesn't feel like so far away so yeah, I am very happy to share what I do with you and the audience, whoever is watching or is going to watch this. So, yeah, I'm just happy and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are happy too. And uh, your final comment or statement to the youth generation, like your age girls or the boys who are youth, who would like to get inspired from Joan? What you gonna tell to them? I would just say something very simple. Um, we know, or if you're a youth and you don't know, 
like the world, Africa, our communities, they're looking at us and they're looking at us this generation to uh, for growth to solve the challenges that we are facing in our communities. And the challenges are all around us and having a challenge is an opportunity for you to have a purpose for as long as you want to do it. So if you see a challenge, if you want to do something in your life, you feel you sit down and you think about something that you want to do, just go on and do it. Like don't wait for anything, don't wait for money, don't wait, just start working on it. You find the resources because we have a lot of opportunities around us. You just need to look for them. You just need to use the opportunities around you. But no one is going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself first. Others are just going to follow, but you have to first believe in yourself first. Yeah. Right, let's say it. And with the join, we'd like to end the bar show and we'd like to say, guys, believe yourself. Don't stuck your progress by seeing the big challenges. Challenges need to be overcome, and it's you who can do that. Look at the example of Joan. She is not only the pride of Uganda, she is ultimately the pride of Africa. She's the icon for you guys. So if she can do it, of course we believe you can do it too. And remember, exactly. let the government support this kind of talent. Why shouldn't we support Joan? or the youth like Joan, with their good intentions, who are sacrificing their youth time for the sake of the community. So we'd like to request every government of every country, please support to this youth talent, support to this youth innovative ideologists so that we can survive and enhance our credibility and growth. Thank you very much. Next episode, we're gonna catch you up with next new guests. Till then, safely and happily stay at your home or wherever you are working it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <music>